it's the theory that me and various other scientists were starting to conform around over the last few weeks of research. What we still don't know is exactly what cyanobacteria are involved, what toxins they create, why only elephants have been affected, and whether or not other animals, including people, might be affected in the future. And that just right there is a good question. Why were only elephants affected if it was in the water where many elephants go and drink every day? No, and, and many other animals, sorry. It's, it's highly perplexing. But one thing we do know about neurotoxins is that they can be very species or even individual specific. So you, individuals within the same species can have wildly different responses to exposure to neurotoxins. My guess is that it's probably something to do with the anatomy or the physiology of elephants or the way that they behave in and around water. That means that they have been more susceptible to deaths as a result of this. But we still don't quite know. Uh, climate has gone on the back burner, climate change has gone on the back burner during this pandemic, but there are concerning warnings about the impact on a number of species. Um, is climate change part and parcel of these kind of mysterious happenings? 100%. Climate change, as with so many things, is the threat amplifier. It takes these pre-existing threats and it makes them bigger, more likely and more frequent. And that's exactly what's happened here. So harmful algal blooms proliferate in warm conditions. And as this region of Africa warms up, which it is doing, these are only going to become more frequent and more severe in the future, which makes it all the more important for us to find out exactly what this is and then figure out a plan for how to mitigate it. And is that happening? Yes, <laughs> on, on, on both fronts. So regional and international scientists are trying to identify exactly what is causing this, so the precise types of cyanobacteria and what toxins they create. And then myself and, uh, and a small team are looking to try and create an early warming system of some form, probably using satellite data to identify where these blooms are occurring. And then you can put in a mitigation plan after that. Some of these countries are very vulnerable financially. They don't necessarily have the money to, to put into conservation. How much of a problem is that? Well, I think the problem is that people assume that conservation is, is a loss of finance. Whereas what we realise over the last little while, COVID being the number one example, is that we need to invest in conservation. Otherwise, the entire world collapses around us. COVID-19 virus, the pandemic, was caused by a breakdown in conservation. And if we look at the enormous cost of the fires in Australia over the last little while, that's from not investing in conservation early enough. And I believe that countries all across the world need to realise that this needs to be a part of their central financing. They need to be protecting wild places because we need that for a, for a habitable planet. We've had a distressing stranding of whales in Tasmania. Why does an, Do you have any idea why events like this happen? One of the very recent theories that's being proposed is that random stranding events such as this might be caused by long-term exposure to environmental neurotoxins, the same type of thing that may well have killed these elephants in Botswana. So whales and dolphins that have been stranded and seals and manatees that have been dying in the sea have been discovered to have high concentrations of neurotoxins in their brains and also plaques, the type of amyloid plaques you see when people develop Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. So it is possible, it's being proposed, that these stranding events might be linked to toxicosis leading to some form of dementia and a, a mass stranding can happen because they've all been exposed at the same time. It's still very early days, the science is new, but I wouldn't be surprised if many of these previously unexplained phenomena are as a result of long-term exposure to environmental neurotoxins. Yeah, which comes back again to your point about climate change. And though the loss of those 300 elephants is just so heartbreaking. What impact does it have on the global populations? I think that's another important point to make is that we know that 330 have died because that's the number that they've counted. But elephants, dead or alive, are very difficult to count from the air. So we have to assume that the real number is much, much higher than that. The global population is just over 400,000. So we have to assume that 1% of the global population has died in a couple of months as a result of one event. That, for me, is very significant. 1% might not sound a lot to lots of people, but it sounds like a lot to me. And it makes it all the more important that we identify exactly what this is and that we're able to mitigate it in the future. Well, now, good luck with that work. We do hope it comes off well. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.